What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone 2 Kappa Mood. Oh, yeah, guys. So, uh, since the last episode, I got some stuff done around here. You might notice that over here we have some AgriCraft sprinklers. That's right. I have started doing just a little bit of AgriCraft stuff, not too much. We were trying to get some wheat to be 10, 10, 10 previously, and then I realized, hey, we don't have a watering can. We don't have a way to grow these things faster. Bone meal doesn't work in these crops, really. Especially to like crossbreed them or whatever. So yeah, we kind of like put that on hold for a little bit But I have made myself a wooden water tank. Yeah, you can store water in this. This will provide water to uh, These water channels. So we have water channels all the way around here eight of them and then we have four sprinklers that are uh, sprinkling water down which increases the tick rate the growth rate of crops although there's no particles It's turned off by default these sprinklers are kind of notorious for causing a lot of frame rate lag with all of the particles that they produce. So I guess that's why uh, it's been turned off in this mod pack by default. So I also made myself a infinite water. This is providing water to the water tank, which is providing water to the channels, and the channels are providing the water to the sprinklers of themselves. Uh, the infinite water is not too bad to make. If I can hover over it real quick. I'll press number three on my numeric keypad. That'll show us that it costs four buckets, four glass, and then a machine housing. The housing requires carbide ingots. This is not super difficult. It is one piece of tungsten, which we've gotten from the nether, I believe, or maybe we've gotten from sifting, one of the two, and then eight coal makes eight of those carbide ingots. So that's not that bad of a recipe. It requires brass, which is zinc and copper. We've gotten both of those from sifting. And then these copper wire coils, which is a stick plus copper, and then some iron. Again, not that difficult to make. The hardest part of that is probably the four water buckets, which we've been collecting from loot bags. And then we can also make the iron plates to make them not really a problem. So anyway, uh, each one of these sprinklers increases the tick rate of the crops, and they do stack. So four of these makes it go four times faster. I could add in another four but I didn't have all the resources necessary to do that just yet, so we left it right there, and that's pretty quick, especially when you use the watering can. We didn't make the watering can previously because it required electrical steel, if I remember correctly, and since then we have we have made an alloy smelter, so yes, we are able to make electrical steel. Uh, so I did that, so we do have a watering can in here somewhere. Watering can, I made clippers. Yeah, we got all these different things going on here. Um, so I was kind of just recording an episode a little bit ago, guys. Uh, you might there, There's some other things in here we'll talk about, but I just got done recording about two hours worth of a video, and then I went to go check out a part and make sure I did something right in the video, and there's no audio. The entire thing had no audio, so I have to kind of like restore backup a little bit and try and do some things. So I'm going to go over some things that we've done here. Uh, one of those things was I was going to <laughs> make... Uh, automatic sieve. This is what I want to work on for today. I want to get automatic resources going so we can start the process of making, um, you know, all of our resources coming in automatically. So that means we need more power. We need more sieves. We need a lot of machines to turn cobblestone into, uh, gravel, sand, and dust, right? Okay. So, uh, that's what we're going to be working on today. I had to make a bunch of conduits, so I have another infinite water down here, which provides water to this oak barrel, so all I gotta do is spam it with a little bit of dust. I guess it's only compressed dust. Yeah, so if we uncompress this dust, and we right-click on the barrel, it just makes clay pretty easily. So you need the clay for the conduit binder and things of that nature, so that's why that is there. Uh, we're gonna be moving our lava production and we're gonna be doing some power generation under here so I added in this platform I added in another crucible and I've added in another Eulorium block so we're gonna be moving our lava production over here uh, we're gonna be piping lava into our smeltery for now until we get better fuel yeah and then the extra lava that we have we are going to be using to uh, power like auto hammerers and our auto sieves and things like that. So that's the general plan for today. So yeah, if we're going to be making 
sand, gravel, and dust. We're going to need a way to convert cobblestone into those. Originally, <laughs> I had thought that I was going to use sag mill because you can sag mill gravel and or uh, cobblestone into gravel and then gravel into sand and sand into dust, right? No, that's not right. The sag mill takes gravel and turns it into sand. So I had already had made up some of these things by the time I realized the problem here. So we have six machine chassis and 12 pistons and I've made some pressurized fluid conduit and all this kind of stuff. But unfortunately, this route is not going to work. Yeah, so we need to make ourselves auto hammerers. Or I guess, I don't remember what the name is of the item is. It's called an automatic hammerer. Okay, so an automatic hammerer is made with some dark steel piston, weighted pressure plate, and an anvil. Uh, well, we can reuse those pistons. Those are a little expensive because they cost the, uh, the red redstone alloy or whatever the red alloy it's a piece of iron with eight pieces of redstone those get a little bit expensive when you have to make a bunch of them and i had to make a bunch of those for <laughs> these machine chassis but we will get uses out of these later on so it's not that big of a deal uh so anyway we need to make some of these automatic hammerers so we're gonna need some invar invar is made from iron and nickel and i believe we have a lot of iron yeah we almost have three blocks of iron at this point yeah, all the different resources we've been collecting just from this automatic sieve right here. Each time it sieves something, we get one piece of broken iron. So yeah, that is a lot of iron that we're collecting, plus uh, iron that we're getting from the loot bags from our monsters over here and things like that. So yeah, we just need to combine some iron with some nickel, or I guess ferrous, in our smeltery over there to get the invar. And we should be able to make some of these machines. But I guess the first thing we should do before we even work on making these automatic cameras, we need to get ourselves more lava production over there. So I'm going to take a transfer node out of here. Uh, we should make ourselves an oak drawer or I guess some kind of a storage drawer. I believe it's 14 logs will turn into uh, one of those. You need to make a chest and then you can do this and this, one of those. There we go. There's an oak drawer. So we're also going to need to get ourselves uh, a world interaction upgrade. So that requires electrotine. Uh, I believe that's also a an iron pick, if I remember correctly. I just did this a little bit ago. <laughs> I'm trying to remember all of these different things. Yeah, unfortunately, recording problems like that, not much you can do about it. Um, so that's not the right thing. Let's. Oh, you know what? It's four of those and four lapis. That's what it was. Four of those and four lapis. Great. Okay, so there's that. This, 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 and then this guy. Cool. So there's a world interaction upgrade, transfer node, a place to store that stuff. Also, I was cooking up over here some pulsating iron. No, conductive iron. Did I not make pulsating iron yet? <laughs> I don't remember where we are right now. Uh, doesn't look like I have crafted any pulsating iron. Okay, so we can start doing that now. Let's grab 16 ender pearls. We're going to need the pulsating iron to make item conduit. So there's that. 16 of those. We will go ahead and smelt those down into pulsating iron. Yeah, so the conductive iron that I have right here, we're going to turn this into energy conduit. Uh, the energy conduit in this pack is a little bit... It's, oh, it's, I want to say it's overpowered. I don't know if it's overpowered, but the very first tier, the conductive iron version of this will do, I think it's 30,000 per connection. It's pretty good. Uh, we don't need a whole lot of that. I'll just make 40 of that for right now. Uh, so we'll transfer our power around with the energy conduit. Uh, I think what we're going to do is make some more of these lava generators. Originally, I thought that we should do an 8x lava generator make eight of those things and combine it together the problem is if we look at the lava generators here uh eight of those all the resources go into those which is kind of expensive plus a transfer node energy which requires a little bit of gold more of these transfer nodes that's not a big deal these breath first search things yeah that requires a lot of blocks of redstone uh these speed upgrades require a lot of redstone and then <laughs> the depth first search requires a lot of redstone plus more speed upgrades like, there's a lot of redstone that goes into all those things. And currently, we have a little bit of redstone. And then we have uh, some more ore over here that I've collected from the nether. But not a whole lot to make those kinds of things. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to make the lava generators. But we're not going to upgrade it to the AX until a little bit later. 
Uh, it doesn't provide more power. It's just combining eight of those together into one block. So we can make a few more uh, fluid conduits and energy conduits and so on and so forth to connect them all together. But anyway, let me go ahead and finish up this crafting. I need to get some automatic cameras online. Uh, we need to wait for this pulsating iron to finish up over here. Yeah, let's wait for that to happen, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. Well, I got a lot of the crafting out of the way. Yeah, we <laughs> we had to do a lot of stuff here. So we got six lava generators. We got six automatic hammerers. We got three oak drawers, and we got a bunch of conduits and other random stuff that I've left in my inventory. I think we should be good to go. So the first thing we need to do is start producing lava, right? So we have our transfer node here with the world interaction upgrade. Uh, just producing cobblestone and pushing it into this drawer, which is now apparently full, 2048 cobblestone. Awesome. Uh, so let's go ahead and start pulling some of that cobblestone out of here, and we'll put it into our crucible. So this is going to be always active, and this will be insert. Very easy. So now that just turns into lava at 50x speed because of the Eulorium block. Everything's good to go. So we can start adding in our other conduit here. We want to bring some of that lava up. And into this tank up here, uh, we can finally get rid of this lava drum, which I've been using to keep our smeltery full of stuff. Uh, so this will end up being, well, you know what? Let's leave that alone for right now. <laughs> It'll be easier later. Uh, but yeah, this will be auto extract and that'll be insert up here. I guess we can switch this one to insert for now. Cool. All right. So we'll just have to set this to auto extract uh, in a minute. So we're going to set up some power production, right? So we have six of these lava generators. I don't know if six is going to be enough or too much for the uh, amount of power that we need, but I think we're just going to go ahead and leave these out here for now. Again, we're not going to upgrade these to the 8X because it just costs too much redstone at this point in time. Maybe after we start automatically sifting our stuff and we get a bunch of redstone coming in, automatically we'll look at it. But for right now, yeah, we're not going to do that. Okay, so we need to provide these things with lava, and then we also need to get the power out and put them into our hammers, right? So let's go ahead and bring our conduit over here, and we'll connect it in the back just like so. And bring it down. Okay, so the lava will come up the pipe. It'll come over here. It'll go into the smeltery, fill up all of these uh, generators. I think we should be good to enable this conduit. Uh, so extract always active Is that oh I did on the wrong one <laughs> that needs to be uh, Insert this one. We want extract always active. Okay, so now lava is going into all these different generators We're filling it up uh, Their internal power needs to fill up. So it's gonna be using some lava uh, While that happens we might end up moving our other crucible and our other Eulorium block from over there over here just so we can make this a little bit faster. I don't know. We haven't we haven't gotten to that point just yet uh, I think we're gonna need to move some of these guys out of here. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to start auto hammering Yeah, we need to auto hammer cobblestone into gravel gravel into sand and then sand into dust, right? Okay, so let's give ourselves just a little bit of space right here and we will put down Three of these drawers these drawers. These are gonna contain the different materials and then we need some auto hammers that's going to fill them up. So I think what we're going to do, uh, we're going to use three of those right here that's going to hammer uh, cobblestone into gravel, right? And then we're going to need two of these that's going to hammer the gravel into sand. And then we're going to need one that's going to hammer sand into dust, right? So you have to add in three of these because two of those gravel are going to go into here so we can make sand and then pass the other sand over into this one, right? So yeah, it seems like a lot of stuff, but we need it to fill up uh, all of these equally So the next thing we need to do is start grabbing some of the cobblestone that is coming from here over into There so we can just go ahead and run our item conduit up the line like so and We want it to connect Over here Cool, and right like that. Okay, so now the cobblestone that is being extracted here is going over here, up the line, over, and then we want these going to insert on each one of these on green. Cool, so now all three of those should be getting 
cobblestone in there. It looks like they are. Did they place a conduit somewhere I shouldn't have? <laughs> I think maybe I didn't. <laughs> I felt like I placed one. Okay, so yeah, all of these are going in here. Each one of these requires 40 RF per tick, and each one of these generators, I th are they 40 RF per tick each? Maybe. <laughs> so we might not have enough power to run everything, uh, but we're going to try and get this going as fast as we can here. Or I guess as easily as possible. We might end up having to move the other two lava generators over here to provide more power. We will see how this all goes. Okay, so now that we have this all set up, uh, the next thing that we need to do is extract the gravel from here and put it into this guy. So these need to be set to insert and extract. So I think we will extract on the red channel. I think that should be fine, right? Uh, in, out, extract, always active. I need to make sure I set always active on this one as well. And uh, this one will be set to uh, red and then always active as well. And then we need to set down here. This will be inserting on red. Okay, so cobblestone goes in on green, gravel comes out on red. And then they get inserted into here on red as well. So I'll go ahead and hook these all up. It's going to be the same kind of a thing. Uh, this one needs to... Well, I guess we can do a little bit more. We'll extract on black, right? So the gravel will go in here into the drawer first, and then it'll be extracted on black. We can add in some more of these conduits here. We want to uh, do in out, and we want to insert on black. So the gravel that's produced over there will come over here. So we'll do in out. Uh, whoops, insert on black. Okay, so then we're going to uh, probably extract sand onto the next color, go into here, and then extract that and put it into this one so it makes dust. And then we'll figure out how to get all these things over into automatic sieves. So let me do a little bit more conduit work here, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so as I've been working over there, making a little bit more progress, I noticed that there were some cows that have spawned over here. <laughs> so it looks like we got ourselves, is this another liquid XP? Did we already get that one before? I can't remember. What is our, um, what cows do we have right here? We got Seared Stone, Resonant Ender, Molten Com Copper, Liquid XP. So that is our second one, which is awesome. Fire, Water, and Essence. So uh, in this mod pack, if you have two move fluid cows of the same fluid, you can breed them together with wheat to make a baby cow of the same fluid. So we could get a lot of liquid XP if we start breeding those together. Uh, so the other cows we have over here, uh, destabilized redstone, we have molten constantan, and then we also have molten electrum. All of those are pretty good. The problem with the destabilized redstone, though, you would think, oh, that's free redstone, right? Yeah, unfortunately, there is no way that I know of that you can cast out destabilized redstone into redstone blocks. So if we look, destabilized redstone, if we look at this, like, we can convert it into other materials like Molten Signalum if we wanted to, but there is no way to cast this. Like, we look at a uh, redstone block, normally, or I guess it would be block of redstone, wouldn't it? because vanilla names everything like that. <laughs> so normally it, you'd be able to see that you could cast things out if you search like this for the uses of it and how to make it, but there is no way to do that. That's been disabled in this mod pack. So that destabilized redstone cow over there, not as useful as you would think at first glance. Uh, it is a blood moon right now, wherever the, wherever the moon is. Am I blind? <laughs> okay, the moon's right there. Uh, I couldn't see it. Uh, so the moon's right there. So another thing that has happened is we have two of these white stones now. Uh, I charged one of these up off camera uh, between last episode and now. So if you have a charged white stone and it is a blood moon, you can just cue that onto the ground with your magnet turned off so it can stay on the ground. You can cue that onto the ground. You can see that it gets red particles. That'll turn it into a blood stone. Now remember, to make the white stone, you need the uncharged one. It has to be a full moon. You have to be standing on a solid block, and it has to be just after midnight, and then it starts charging up, right? So uh, once you have a charged one, you throw it on the ground during a blood moon, and then you get one of these guys, a bloodstone. So these bloodstones require charges, and you charge it up simply by killing, I think, monsters or animals or whatever. We'll just kill a zombie here so you can see. So I killed that one, and you can see it has a charge of one. 
After a certain amount of charges, you start getting a regen effect by having that in your inventory. I think the maximum amount of charges is 400, and you get like half a heart every second or every half second. Like, it's a very fast regen effect. It's not like the regen potion. It's a slightly different regen, I think. But anyway, if you have two of those, you get one heart every time. You have three of them, you get one and a half hearts every time. You can stack these and it gets very, very OP very quickly, but it does take a little bit of time to charge these up. So 400 kills for a maximum charge one. If you die with it in your inventory, it loses all the charges. If you have three of them in your inventory, you lose all the charges in all three of them. Yeah, so it's just something <laughs> to be aware of. But we'll keep that on us so we can charge it up over time. So this is mostly set up over here. I wanted to kind of turn this on while you guys were here to make sure everything's working. So yeah, I got the gravel, sand, and dust in here. They're all locked, so uh, that's just the images. There's nothing in here except for the gravel, or I'm sorry, for the cobblestone. Let's add some power, right? That should get this thing going. So we need to put a power conduit on each one of these guys. And see here, these things turn on because these conduits do have an internal power buffer. You can see it's 30,000 RF. Uh, so we'll go ahead and run these up like a so. Just follow along the same conduit. We'll keep this looking nice and clean. And that should turn on these auto hammers. I think that's pretty much all we got to do. So look how fast these things are going. Oh my goodness. So fast. We're making <laughs> gravel at lightning speed right now. <laughs> okay. So it looks like the way this is set up is it's going to go to the first one. Uh, we could probably change this. So it is round robining. Yeah, that way it'll fill up both of these equally. We'll probably end up doing something like that. But for right now, I think we should be okay. Uh, so you can see we got gravel in this one, nothing in this one. These are filling up with power. Yeah, I think everything should be fine over here. They're all filling up quite nicely. Yeah, and they're not going super fast, but they all require 40 RF per tick while they are doing stuff. Uh, so our sand right now is at zero our dust is at four our gravel We have ten so this is gonna be a process We will be able to upgrade these with the fortune and the speed upgrades But that's gonna cost a lot more RF, but for right now We're just generating these resources all the time while we're doing other things, which is awesome It takes a lot of the work away from having to do things manually, which I like so how are these doing? So these are all out of power. They're all full of lava. How's this thing doing? Are we keeping up on lava? It says the fluid volume is 5.8 buckets, 5.9. Uh, it might be keeping up. We might have to add another crucible over here. I'm not sure what the maximum fluid volume of one of these is. Is it eight buckets? I don't know. Doesn't seem like it's fluctuating too much. Anyway, I think we should be good to go on this for a while, so I'll let this run, and we'll be right back, guys. Alright, guys. Well, I went ahead and I added in our other two lava generators that we had powering our alloy smelter and our sag mill over there. Yeah, I kind of feel like we need the extra power. Uh, each one of these requires 40 RF per tick. Each one of these makes 40 RF per tick, right? So... The six generators we had was enough to power all six of these hammers, and then that's it. That we'll have the, the gravel sand and dust, and that's all we can do. So I wanted to add in the automatic sieving over here. So I did add in, or I did make one more lava generator. We brought the other two over here, so now we have a total of nine of these. So these should run, all six of these, and all three of these with no power left over. <laughs> uh, so after adding in the other two, I did notice that we were running low on lava. I wasn't sure if we were running low. Actually, we were running low on the six. Uh, I wasn't sure if we were running low right away, but yeah, I came back and I looked and we were definitely didn't have enough lava in here to keep up with the lava demands. So I brought our over, I brought over our other lava generator, our other crucible here and our other uh, Eulorium block. So now we are producing twice the lava we have 50% more lava generators than we did, and we should be able to power everything. Now, I haven't hooked up the power here, but I did hook these up, so they are collecting the sand, the gravel, and the dust. Now, I do want to go further than this, because once we sift it, uh, we're going to have to do stuff with that. But unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have time today to get that all done. But what we can do is start the sifting process and get that cooking. So I'll just go ahead and add the, the power conduit along here like so and all of these should be doing their thing 
and now we should be automatically collecting all of the resources without any intervention at all. Uh, the only thing we have to worry about is that these will eventually fill up full of stuff and we're going to have to do something with that. We're going to be collecting a lot of iron because each one of these that we sift does give us an iron and uh, the other stuff that we collect too. But yeah, this is going to be so good. We're going to be collecting all the different things that we could possibly want. Uh, so I think for right now, what I'm going to end up doing, let's go ahead and just dig out underneath this thing real quick. The uh, That flight is so good. We're going to dig out under there. We're going to put uh, item conduit under there and into this chest right here. Just so we have a little bit more storage for all the different things that we will be collecting. Uh, no, there's not really a good way for me to do that while I'm flying. I can't really access those, can I? Not too well. Uh, so, thing you can do with the Yeti wrench, if you hold shift and you left click on a conduit, you should be able to get to its interface, like so. Uh, so I'll do always active extract, and then I guess I'll have to break out these other blocks here to get these other ones. We'll do that as well. Uh, always active, and this one, always active. Cool. All right, so those are all done. Now we just need to send that stuff over to this chest right here. We'll just run the conduit along like so. There it goes. Cool. So now I got to kind of fly around <laughs> to get back up here. Alright, so are we getting stuff over here? No, because this needs to be set to insert, so let's go ahead and set this to insert. Now all the things should be coming over here. That's a lot of stuff. I like it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this chest won't hold everything. We definitely want to do things like compact all of these different resources down into their dust form. Uh, things that like the crushed iron ore go into the sand. We want to take that sand, hammer it down into the dust, and then put the dust in the storage. Eventually we'll want these things auto smelted and all that stuff, but for right now, I think this is a pretty good start on getting automated as far as resource collection goes. So, you know what, I think we're, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this setup as it is right now. Uh, we will be working on this more, like I said, we want to auto compact, we want to auto hammer the stuff down into the final form, and then we need to store everything in its proper place, but you know, for right now, this is working for me. We'll be collecting redstone automatically, a little bit of lapis, some of this electrotine. It's all good. Eventually, we will want to add in the speed upgrades and the fortune upgrades, but before we can do that, we have to look at how we're going to get power more efficiently than what we are right now. But you know what, guys? I think we're going we're gonna to go ahead and wrap up the episode here for today. Hope you guys liked it. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you did, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.